Jennifer, thank you for joining us. I think we spoke to you a couple of, of weeks ago. The situation, I, I'm not sure how you would describe it. Is it much, much worse? Was it to be expected and, and people are overreacting? Or do we really need to take as many precautions as the government is telling us? Francine, I didn't expect to be here a few weeks from now talking about this again. I didn't think the story would run. I think it is reaching a bit of a tipping point. And I am quite concerned by how things are going. Uh, this is because isolation doesn't work or it's just the, the spread? I mean, you see, like, you know, the, there are these super spreaders, which is basically two, three people don't realize they have symptoms, either because they're asymptomatic or it's like a cold, and then a thousand people could be infected. I think it's just basically now we have people that are spreading the disease, uh, that have been documented to spread the disease without ever been in contact with anyone from any of these hotspots, and that's what's really worrying me. It could have been spreading for weeks, for example, in Seattle. Uh, and we're hearing more and more of these kind of things. Um, Professor, I mean, what do you look at for data, right? The, the fatality case or the mortality rate is a difficult to judge also because you, you could have, it, it, it could be quite low uh, because so many people have it without realizing. There's been a few, you know, people are sort of fighting over the mortality rates. It's ranging anywhere from 1% to 0.1%. And most recent estimates that I've seen uh, have been closer to 1%. And this is much more than seasonal flu. So even if it's, <clears throat> even if it's, 0.1% that's more than seasonal flu. And if it's a lot of people infected, we still have a lot of deaths to worry Jennifer, about. Jennifer, thank you so much for being with us again. And I really want to strap across your expertise in bacteriology as well as virology. Let me cut to the conversation of the weekend. Do masks work? Masks work up to a certain point. They block physical droplets, like big chunks of cough from hitting your face. But they don't necessarily screen out sort of the smaller particles, viruses and bacteria can go into your eyes. People don't use masks properly. Uh, they often sort of adjust them or touch their face. So up to a certain point, they can do a little bit, but really you're better off washing your hands and not touching right. your face. It, right now in Berlin, there is a report. In Manhattan and of course, greater New York City, there is one, maybe two reports as well. How should our viewers and listeners adjust to that? How do you adjust to the day to one report in a given multi-million population city? You just have to be, I mean, you can't stop this virus, really. It's like stopping the wind. You have to just be sensible and take precautions, but life goes on. We have to just assume that life goes on and most people aren't going to die and we really shouldn't panic. But it is spreading and we do need to be vigilant about that. If you're in public places with lots of people in a close space, you should think about, you know, what's going on in the air between you. Um, uh, doctor, I mean, some of the things that, you know, where it's difficult for everyone in the markets and frankly for anyone because we're kind of expected to be virologists, you know, in the bat of an eyelid. What I've been reading is that the concern is basically whether the National Health Service here in the UK or in Italy or in the US can actually cope with it. So there's also possibly the UK government trying to delay this because it would be much easier to deal with this over the summer. Is that true? We don't know what's going to happen in the summer. I mean, there have been a lot of predictions, but we don't know if it's going to get better in the summer. We hope so, because some respiratory viruses do, but there's no guarantees. But, but is it easier for a health service to deal with it in the summer? I would say so, because there are so many other things going on in the wintertime that overstress the health service. Um, what is the one thing that, that you would caution? I know it's difficult to talk to the markets, but the markets got really scared, and this could be in part what the market has been doing so far. But again, if, are you just expecting 80% of the population to be infected, but a very small percentage to actually pass away, or how should we be looking at this? I think a lot of people will become infected. I don't think a huge number of people will die, but we really don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if the virus will mutate. At the moment, I'm not panicking. I'm just thinking it's important to be vigilant and keep an eye on things, but this thing does keep rolling. Yeah, Dr. Rowan, I know you studied this at the University of Washington a few years ago. Let me cut to the chase. How long do these things last? I mean, you know, I'm rereading Albert Camus' A Plague just to go back to microbiology and microbes in man and the rest of it as well. How long does this last? We don't know. It could be that we'll come to some sort of accommodation with this virus. It will become our new seasonal flu. Uh, it may just trickle out like MERS yeah. did. We, we don't know. That's the, the big thing is that we don't know. We just have to watch and wait. Yeah.